Vibrant colors. Chalo saheli. Song and dance. Chalo re saathi. Chalo re saathi. Indian cinema. This is Rita Gam for World of Film. This is the gateway to Indian Bombay Harbor, symbol of the Raj, the 200 years of British rule that ended in 1947. The Western audience's view of India has been greatly influenced by popular British and Hollywood films. When Western filmmakers deal with Indian subjects, we very often stereotype them. We think only of the Raj, elephants. The Cobra. And poverty. As far as the Raj and, and poverty and the elephants and the snakes are concerned, these are, I think, basically novelties for, for the American audience, especially an audience that doesn't know much about India. I can't deny the poverty here. We, we have poor people here, we have poverty here, and one is not proud of it, one is rather uh, conscious of it. Uh, I would say the, the certain important people should be ashamed of it. It is sad, indeed, that the West uh, likes to see uh, the, the poor side of India rather than the rich side. Indeed, India has grown into one of the industrial giants of the world, with a solid base in science and technology. But India has also experienced a tremendous population explosion. Soon there will be a billion people. How do you entertain such a large and diverse nation speaking 400 different dialects in 15 official languages? To meet this challenge, India has developed the world's largest film industry. It produces nearly a thousand features a year, more than three times that of Hollywood. There are two distinct industries. All India films shot in Bombay in the national language Hindi for national distribution. And regional films shot in local languages in cities like Madras and Calcutta. This is Juhu Beach on the outskirts of Bombay. It's a sort of Hollywood on the Arabian Sea where the stars and leading filmmakers of Hindi language cinema live and work. Shashi Kapoor is the current head of the Kapoor dynasty. The walls of his office are decorated with photos of this exceptional family, which has been in the forefront of Indian cinema for more than 60 years. The Kapoors started in Bombay's film industry in 1927. Shashi's brother, the late Raj Kapoor, Mr. Showman, a dominating superstar, director and producer for decades, he expressed social concerns in the guise of entertainment. Starring in Shakespeare Walla, matinee idol Shashi Kapoor developed an important link to English language Indian cinema. But the lessons, I didn't like them. There's nothing in Sanskrit. I've forgotten. Go on. Shakespeare Walla launched the Traveling Film Company, better known as Merchant Ivory Productions, now one of the world's leading independent companies. Helen G. Hi, G. They started with Indian topics. This is Helen, our leading lady. This is Lucia Lane. How do you do? Well, if you're Miss Chancellor's cousin, take her in to have some supper. Then, gradually expanded to American and international subjects. These occasions leave me ex exhausted. It was thrilling to see your son. Occasionally returning to India. Heat and dust. Starring, of course, Shashi Kapoor. She toast and marmalade, boiled eggs, three minutes, and an English newspaper. Why are Indian stars worshipped with such fervor? 
the moment you see the star, you, you brighten up and you get up. Uh, because, you see, we have believed in lots and lots of gods, in lots of uh, idol worshipping, and the Hindus, I'm saying, not the Muslims. We need stars. I mean, there was Mahatma Gandhi, he was our star. There was Pandit Nehru, he was our star. There was Indra Gandhi, she was our star. That's very interesting. A correlation between your political figures and your stars? Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me about that. I mean, now we have Amitabh Bachchan, who, uh, to me, is a legend, who is a phenomenon. I mean, we never, ever, mind you, the Kapoos have been big stars, and we've been there, and we still are there. The whole generation is now here. But never, ever in the history of Indian filmmaking has there been a star like Amitabh Bachchan. I have seen the ovation, yes, I've seen the reaction of the people. They throw money the moment he appears on the stage. They smile when he smiles, they laugh when he laughs, and they cry when he cries. That is a star to me. Indian film stars are constantly in the public eye. A surprising number of these publications are in English. There's the huge industry of the gossip magazine in India. They talk about your love life, your marriage, your career, the size of your feet. How does that affect you? I think that these are some of the hazards that uh, almost all public figures will have to go through. Um, uh, that's what film magazines exist on. Um, and I think that one must take it in one's stride. Uh, if you are public property, you, uh, everyone wants to know everything about you, and, uh, which is nice. But I think uh, beyond a certain limit, when it begins to hurt or begins uncomfortable or unhealthy, I think uh, that's where you should stop. What is cinema's effect on society? I don't think that um, cinema really um, introduces any new social values. I think that, that we pick from society rather than society picking from us. Amitabh Bashan is the star of the All India Film Industry, which produces formula films. The story stops at regular intervals for the mandatory six to eight musical numbers that have nothing to do with the plot. regarded producer-director Prakash Mira started out together with Amitabh. How did you get started? In 1966, I got my first independent break, a movie called Hasina Manjayagi. And that movie was uh, a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. And then my second movie came Mela. That was also a blockbuster. My third movie came, it was a big flop. And then fourth movie came, that was also a very big hit. And then I started my own production, you can see behind Zanjeev, uh, from where myself and Amitabh Bachchan, we started together. In Zanjeev, Amitabh portrays an angry young man taking the law in his own hands. A charm identifies his parents' murderer. Amitabh became a superstar by introducing a twist to the formula that corresponded to the national psyche. It was the angry individual fighting injustice alone. So chases and fight scenes have become compulsory ingredients of the formula. Let's see where these films are shot. Although the larger sound stages are 20 miles from Bombay at Film City, the Indian equivalent of Hollywood's Burbank Studios or Italy's Chinichita, there are quite a few sound stages in the city and in the Juhu Beach area as well. This is Manakshi Shishadri, one of the hot young stars of India. She's lip-syncing a song for her current film. Minakshi, tell me about the film you're making now. Uh, the title of this movie is Nache Nagin Gali Gali, which literally translated means uh, the female snake is dancing uh, all over the place. But what it really means is that this person is looking for something and she is searching for it in every street and every alley. 
sounds very dramatic. I love it. Are you the female snake? Yes, I am. Is the career span of actresses shorter than that of male actors? It's not as if the career span is cut short. It's just that you graduate on to different roles. What my complaint is that the roles are not so meaty or important or of consequence. And there I would really like to do something about it. Bombay filmmakers of course take advantage of the picturesque locations. Private residences are often rented out to filmmakers for extra income. Raj Babar, one of the busiest and most popular stars of India, is making a film here. What film are you making now? Uh, this is a film called Maya. Uh, it's based on a French novel, Madame Bravery. Are you playing the husband? No, I'm playing a lover's role. What happened to you in the last shot? <laughs> I hurt myself with a bullet. <laughs> How many films are you making right now? Mm, I have at least uh, 25, 26 films on the floor, 18 films are on the floor. Uh -huh. And uh, mm, you, When you say on the floor, you mean they're in the cutting room? Means on the floor means uh, it's in the process. Yes. Means, uh, the 18 films simultaneously I'm shooting, you know, and this year means only six months. Right. Right. Eighteen films simultaneously is not unusual for an Indian star. This is the only way to produce the enormous number of features needed each year. The fantasy of film is basic sustenance for the millions living in poverty. Depti Nava, one of India's more serious actresses, has this to say. The whole fact that it is the only source of real entertainment for the masses of this country I think that's what makes it, you know, what it is, and it's so popular. I mean, that's the one uh, entertainment outlet for the people, for the ordinary man. Cinema in India goes beyond entertainment. It has become almost like religion. How did this fusion between film and religion come about? Indian feature films started at the Hindustan studios, following in the footsteps of the great innovator of special effects, George Méliès. The father of Indian features, Falke, was also influenced by the genius of D.W. Griffith. He found his voice in the quintessentially Indian genre of mythological films. Here, his little daughter is playing the part of the young Krishna. <laughs> Raymond Sagar is the creator of the popular current mythological television film series, the Ramayan. Now, this is our temple that I was talking about. I call it our powerhouse. This is the powerhouse, not only ours, but of the mankind. I've got all gods here. It's a great story. It's still relevant uh, even after millions of years. Your next project is also about? Krishna, Lord Krishna. Krishna. How long will it take you to make? Well, it will be about two to three years. And how many episodes? 78 episodes. How, 70? 78 episodes of 40 minutes each, like Ramayana. Your audience will be in the billions by that time. Yeah, yes, it will be there. But as, as I was telling you, Rita, this is all done by gods. I have personal experience. No, a pen writes, but pen never writes by itself. A hand picks up that pen and it writes. So I am a pen of the gods. Worshipped as God, the southern actor, M.T. Rao, was elected chief minister of his state. 
Mythology and spiritualism has become one of the great Indian exports affecting Western thinking. Hermann Hesse's Siddhartha was produced during the hippie movement, and the Mahabharata continues to enchant Western audiences. The Indian version was created by B. R. Chopra, the doyen of Indian directors. In his office are all the scripts of this, the biggest television series in the world. What's the relationship in India between producer and director? The relationship of the producer and the director continues to remain the same as in India, as outside. But in India, mostly the, the successful producers are producer-directors themselves. Today, we have producers in India also, today also. But they're not the kind of producers you have in America, who have a controlling hand on the whole thing. Here, the director is definitely much more important. Where does your financing come from? Financing comes from the people. People who, really who want, to give, want to give the finance. There are no banks, as in America, and there are no financing associations which finance in America or in England. Here we have to get it from the individuals. That's why Sajidit Ray, India's first and foremost world-class filmmaker, had to find a different way to get his films financed. For the first time, government subsidies were allocated for a feature film. The result was hailed as the greatest human document cinema ever produced. In Patha Panchali, Ray shows the world through the eyes of children in a poor village in Bengal. Influenced by Italian neorealism, Ray was the first to break away from the corny formula film. This started the movement of regional art films subsidized by the government. Western audiences related to this realistic view of life in India. It took 15 years for another Indian filmmaker, Maureen El Sen, to follow his lead. This film inspired the new Indian cinema movement. Shyam Benegal, a disciple of Ray, became the leader of this new wave. Starring the exciting Shabana Azmi, Benegal tells the story of a bored rich boy seducing his servant. The artistic spirit of regional cinema crossed over into Hindi films with Ketan Mehta's exceptional Spices. The women of the spice factory protect one of their own against the advances of the local tyrant. The greatest international success since Ray was Mira Nair's Salam Bombay, which won the Camera d'Or for the best feature film debut in Cannes. It was also nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> Manju! Manju! Maa se le gaya na. Manju! Maa ghar se liye. This film is dedicated to the children on the streets of Bombay. It is always perceived as something different, the art film versus the commercial film. I've never subscribed to that theory myself. I mean, I feel that if a film is well made and, and powerfully crafted and, and, you know, told with a, you know, in a way that absorbs and involves an audience, it, 
It can be any film that will reach an audience. I never underestimate an audience. We live in a realm of, of make-believe and fantasy, and uh, cinema is, is, is fantasized. Yes, there is a, a lot of serious cinema, but uh, uh, you need a lot of serious people to be watching serious cinema. Will you go back to making serious cinema? I would love to do that, but I think that box office-wise, it would not be feasible in India. Wouldn't they find art films equally satisfying? How can you impose that on the, uh, on, the, on the people of India where there's a large percentage of illiteracy? Most of the time he's, uh, he wants to put his mind at thinking where he's going to get his next meal from. It would be torturous and, and terribly um, wrong for us to be getting him inside a theatre and ask him to start thinking about the <laughs> film he's seen. Um, uh, so basically, it's, uh, Indian cinema is escapist. It's, it's there to provide a little bit of everything, uh, uh, give a bit of entertainment, let the man forget his worries and his problems for those three hours that he's in there, and not force him or, or club him with something that's serious and, and mundane, which he's watching every day in his real life in any case. <laughs> The mandatory song and dance in commercial cinema originated in the early talkies and in regional films. Our tradition has been to have songs in the theatre. And that tradition has passed on to the Indian cinema. So that in cinema also, in film also, we try to have songs. But this is not enough. So song and music is a part of our life. Like audiences all over the world, Indians love Hollywood entertainment. If you want to see what trends are in India, you only go to America. Because whatever comes from there becomes the trend here. The violence came from the West, it has continued to stay here. Sex came from the West, it has started invading the Indian cinema. And anything else which comes from the West, it actually becomes a part of the Indian cinema. In the 70s, you know, came the onslaught of the violence from the West. Violence pays off at the box office in India as well. Cholet, the biggest box office hit of all time, played uninterruptedly for five years. Another huge hit, Raj Kapoor's Bobby, blended Western choreography with Indian sensuality. Although violence, rape and sex is taken from the West, they're never shown for real only by suggestion. Do you ever get to kiss the man? No. <laughs> No, I haven't done any of one of those films yet. <laughs> but I'm, I'm required to do a kissing scene now. <laughs> you get to kiss the girl as the lover. <laughs> yes, we do get in suggestion. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I get to kiss him, maybe a peck on the cheek, yes. Can you kiss the girl now? No, we can't. You're I mean, I don't, but uh, <laughs> I know that uh, uh, there's some very valiant efforts being made in our cinema. <laughs> All locally produced films are subject to strict censorship upon completion. Foreign productions can't even get started until their screenplays are cleared by several government agencies. I find a lot of people very interested in knowing exactly how the censors work in our country. It's very simple. Uh, we have a few principles which we work by. Uh, as of now, the censors are very strict as far as action, violence, sex, or too much of intimacies involved. They do not allow it. 
and uh, our movies are by and large quite conservative. Yes, but I think Indian films get away with a lot. You know, we are seeing a lot of violence on the screen, which is not helping us, you know. According to the state of things in this country, it's not really helping to see so much violence, and especially when things are happening around you know, so severely. I would say that films do get away with a lot. Here's the fearless Nadia, India's answer to the perils of Pauline. This flamboyant heroine performed all her own stunts. In actuality, the situation of women in Indian films is very different. I think here, you know what the trend is, the, the minute a woman turns 30 or 35, immediately they are so keen to push her into the mother's category. And they think that no, now, you know, because most of the stories are like love stories. And they're not really going into relationships and mature themes in, in the mainstream cinema. So there's no way you can, you know, get the main parts where even if it's the singing and dancing around the trees, you know, even those don't. So I think the span is much shorter for women, where, whereas men, they keep working with the younger actresses every three years, every five years. But for women, it's, uh, I think it's just, an, it's, they have an attitude problem. <laughs> Today in the society, uh, we make women as a commodity. If we have to celebrate, we use women. If we have a nice framing or nice thing or nice, it's very few filmmakers who really think about the women's uh, film, either in America or in India or in anywhere you take. I am personally very committed to working with as many women as I and as I can, but I, I don't hire uh, women on the basis of their gender. I don't hire anybody on the basis of their gender. It pleases me that a very proficient person happens to be a woman, but if, obviously we all have to be proficient first. Did the great Hollywood musical director, Busby Berkeley, make a film in India? Is this the Indian Charlie Chaplin? Oh. There's a tendency in Indian films to plagiarize Western films. First and foremost, it's, uh, I think it's extremely flattering that uh, somebody is copying somebody. Flattering for the person from where the copy is being made. And that's good. I think in art it's important that uh, there should be a base from where a lot of uh, uh, inspiration is taken. Uh, I have made a movie with Amitabh Bachchan called Lavaris. And in Lavaris he has played a woman in disguise. And it was a very, very interesting item he has played. And three years after, Hollywood has made a movie called Tootsie, where great Dustin Hoffman and he got all the coverage a great actor is here. But not everything from the West was bad. World-class directors and stars have made great films in and about India for decades. Jean Renoir's The River. David Lean's Passage to India. And of course, Richard Attenborough's Gandhi. How do you feel about Westerners using Western actors for Indian parts? To have a recognized Western face is certainly more economically viable than to have an unknown Indian face. The minute you have a white protagonist, life becomes easier with the dollar. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that we have to change this myopia. I don't think there's kind of any kind of a resentment or a jealousy in, uh, we should have. They are also fine artists. Now, there's a classic example of Ben Kingsley in Gandhi. Now, he played Gandhi. And I can't imagine any other actor, Indian or otherwise, playing Gandhi the way Ben Kingsley. The very essence of it, you know, it gives you a little bit of everything. Something to smile about, something to cry about, something to sing about.
This is Rita Gam. Salam, India. Yeah. 